Hello everyone, it's that time again. It's the 11th International Cosmic Day and my name is Caroline. I am Leah. Together we welcome you to this unique day in astroparticle physics. We are part of the ICD team and we work at DAISY near Berlin in Germany. There are scientists all over the world who work on astroparticle physics. Today they'd like to give you an insight into their daily work. In 1912, Victor Hess discovered that messengers from space hit the Earth, particles that you cannot hear or feel, but which are there. What Victor discovered was cosmic radiation, or short, cosmic rays. Today we know also other cosmic messengers, such as photons and neutrinos, which we can measure with various experiments. Each of these messengers tells us a part of the story of what is going on in our universe. And only by combining our findings about the different cosmic particles, we can understand what is happening in the powerful sources like supernovae and black holes. This year we have invited a special guest. It's Dr. Becky Smethurst. She's an astrophysicist at Oxford University and studies supermassive black holes. Some of you may know her from YouTube. Her YouTube channel, Dr. Becky, has more than 500,000 followers. In her videos, she shows us what her everyday life as a scientist is like and takes us with her on a fantastic journey to our universe. We are so glad to have you here with us to celebrate the International Cosmic Day 2022. Welcome and hello, Becky. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here as well. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm so glad I get to share this with you all. On the ICD, we come together to learn more about cosmic particles and discuss our findings with each other. As an astrophysicist, this is what you do every day, Becky. What do you like most about your job? I really like how I occasionally find myself in conversations with people where I feel like I have to pinch myself just to check that I'm not dreaming <laughs> that like this is my life where on a random Tuesday at 11 30 in the morning I can be talking about whether supermassive black holes have dark matter in them and I'm just like how is this my job that I get to do this and then also as an astrophysicist as an astronomer you get to go use telescopes in very exotic places in the world so again standing on the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii using a telescope and being paid to do that <laughs> to pinch myself because it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Why did you choose to share your work and life as an astrophysicist on YouTube? Well, firstly, I think just people in general love to hear about what we do as astrophysicists I think everyone is sort of weirdly fascinated by space because it is so vast and unknowing and we've barely scratched the surface of it so I think there's just an appetite there and you know you want to make sure people are hearing from real scientists online and making sure that they're getting accurate and reliable information and I want it to be that source of information for people but also I think you know, people don't always know what scientists and astrophysicists do. It can be quite opaque to people looking in. So helping people to realize, you know, what does a scientist do every day? What does an everyday, you know, look like for an astrophysicist? Do you sit at your desk? What are you doing? Are you coding? Are you writing? Are you analyzing data? Just giving people that insight, I think is so, so important, especially if, you know, there's people out there that are also maybe hoping to be scientists or astrophysicists one day themselves. They get a little glimpse of what it might be like. Yeah, and that's that's really nice. I really love your YouTube channel. <laughs> but back then, <laughs> back then, was there a key moment for you when you decided to become a physicist? Uh so I've always, always been obsessed with space. You know, I was the eight-year-old kid that wanted a telescope rather than a bicycle. Um, but I really hated physics at school. <laughs> um, when I was sort of 13, 14, it was one of my least favorite subjects because I thought it was really boring. And then as I got further in high school, sort of 15, 16, I realized, oh, actually, 
this is astronomy, this is radioactivity, this is particle physics, this is the stuff that is really interesting that I want to know about. And then I started asking questions that my teacher didn't know the answer to. And they would tell me, oh, go and look it up online or in the library or wherever. And I realized that the question I was asking, nobody knew the answer to. And that's when it clicked for me that, you know, not everything is known yet. I feel like I devoured all of these books as a kid. Everything I get my hands on about space and physics and our universe. And it sounded like we knew everything already. But actually, in reality, we we know so, so little. And I think it clicked for me at about 15 or 16. I realized that's a job that you can do is to find out the answers That's a scientist's job is, is to ask the questions we don't know an answer to yet and try and find one. And I realized that's what I want to do with my life. Becky, that's really interesting. So do you have a role model you look up to? Uh, Yes. Her name is Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Uh, Some of you may have heard of her before. She's an astronaut as well. She works in the same building as me. So it's very strange to run into your role model every day. Um, But she discovered pulsars back in the 60s pulsars being these neutron stars that give off radio waves almost like a lighthouse they've never been discovered before so obviously it's a dream as a scientist to you know discover something never found but since then she's just been a champion for women in astronomy and minorities in astronomy she won a prize three years ago or so and um it was worth millions and millions of dollars in the prize money she donated it to a grant to help women and minorities study astrophysics which i I just think is amazing. She's an absolute legend. That sounds so, so cool. Um, And we have one last question. Mm -hmm. What would you like the students to take home from this day? I'd like them to take home the sense that they can tackle anything, any problem that's thrown their way. You know, all it takes is a little bit of, you know, deep breath, what are, the, what, what are the issues? How can I solve them? And just taking it step by step and feeling like after that, you can accomplish anything because at the end of the day, you can. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Thank you so much for these inspiring words to our students. You're very welcome. And thanks for having me. So folks, if you like to see more from Dr. Becky, check out our website under activities. You will find a selection of videos from her and the link to her YouTube channel. With this inspiration, we are looking forward to see all the great experiments and the results from you and wish you an exciting day full of new insights and lots of fun. And don't forget to take part in our selfie contest and in our drawing contest. Here you can see the hashtag. So thanks again a lot, Becky, and goodbye. (laughs) Goodbye, everyone.